I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I'm Coach Victoria and in this video we're going to be talking to you about when do avoidance realize they've lost you. Mm, everyone's looking at their watch like when is it? Please, is it? what is taking so long? It's been three minutes. <laughs> you know it, it honestly like just a couple of days feels like an eternity mm -hmm. when you go through that breakup and you're in no contact. I remember that feeling uh, where the Applebee's girl, I think she reached out like three days after we broke up. Mm. Maybe it wasn't even that, but it felt like forever, mm. right? Just a couple of days feels like, oh my gosh, like, I'm, and all you, it feels timeless. It feels like time stops and it's, it's like, it's just standing still and all you're doing is obsessing about when are they coming back? Mm -hmm. And then you come to the channel and you hear about us talking about attachment styles and how people attach differently. And you realize, oh my gosh, my ex is avoidant. Yep. They're never coming back, are they? And there's a lot of bad advice out there. There's a lot of people that just don't understand attachment theory or mental health. And so they'll say things that are kind of toxic or immature. And we try and really put some perspective on it because you know, attachment theory is really just a glimpse into understanding somebody's mental health and their ability to do a long-term connection and love and romance and meeting somebody's needs and all the things that come along with that. So you may hear about avoidant attachment style and you think, well, my ex is avoidant, they're not coming back. Mm -hmm. But that's simply not true. Yeah, and we talk about it often. We have many videos on this exact topic mm -hmm. of if avoidance come back at all. So I highly encourage you to check those out if that's what you're curious about. In this video, we're going to talk more about the timing of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when you're in the situation, every minute feels like an eternity. And you're just desperate to reconnect with them because you kind of feel like you're dying without them. But you have to understand the avoidant doesn't feel like that especially at first, and double that if they know they haven't lost you. Mm -hmm. So a big part of the avoidant attachment style is suppression, suppression of their own emotions, feelings, and grief. And so it does take avoidance generally longer after a breakup to reconsider the relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the pattern that we see. It doesn't mean that it never happens, but it does take longer. So I do want to talk about this a little bit more too. They need to be cold in order for them to distant. So if they have made a decision to end the relationship, it is much more difficult for them to be warm, to be loving, to be, you know, keeping in contact with you than it is to cut things off, to be almost mean. Sometimes you see your ex as mean or very blunt. Mm -hmm. They can be very cold towards you, not warm mm -hmm. and loving like what you're used to. Yeah. And they need to do that in order to get the space that they asked for. Also, with avoidance generally suppressing a lot of their emotions, sometimes a breakup ends in a way that they feel anger. They might be angry at something you did, at something you said, it might be part of the reason for the breakup. Mm -hmm. And for someone who suppresses their emotions, it's going to take longer for that anger to subside. You know, if they were somebody to deal with their emotions more um, directly, mm -hmm. you know, then it, it wouldn't take as long. But the more you suppress something, the more it haunts you, the more it lives in the shadow. And it can be harder to, to get to a place where you feel more emotionally stable. Yeah. Even if all of this is happening unconsciously, mm -hmm. which I know is maybe a little bit strange to think about. Which is why we talk about process. Process mm -hmm. takes time. Yep. The other factor in this is they are more likely to feel smothered even after a breakup. And so this is also going to depend on your behaviors too after a breakup. Mm -hmm. you know, it will take them longer if they feel like 
you know, they, they are still being trapped into this relationship or you're going to try to convince them otherwise mm -hmm. or manipulate them back in, it's going to make them feel a little bit more reserved and have more walls up, which then takes more time for them to soften. Exactly, exactly. So you have to understand that your behavior is going to have a big impact on how long it takes them to feel that space. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to stay emotionally centered and stop reaching out to them. They're not going to feel it if you're reaching out. Okay. Yeah. So you got to understand that as the process goes on, okay, avoidance will question their decisions. Avoidance will start to think about if you have lost interest in them, if you even care about them anymore, when they don't hear from you. That's important to understand. If they're hearing from you, they're not going to feel like that. Mm -mm. And that's why I'm saying handwritten letters, clean slate messages, good reminder text, whatever nonsense you may hear ultimately is less powerful than that anxiety of losing you. That is the ultimate thing that makes them miss you the most. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to emphasize that for years and we'll continue to do it. So. If you're reaching out, they're not going to have the full experience of losing you because every time you make a bid to connect with them, they know you're still there and they no longer have that fear. So you will kind of become like a safety net for them where they can go off and explore the world and know that they can come back and still have you there. But when you stop and you show that you're not going to chase somebody who's not interested and you respect their boundaries and set your own and live your own life, that is when things start to change. And that's why you can't do any kind of reaching out to friends or family as well. If they want to do it, that's okay. Okay. So this is why we tell you not to do anything to reach out to them in any way, shape or form. And that includes friends or family, because if you do, they feel like you haven't moved on. You're still wanting them. You're trying to pry and snoop into their life and they won't like it. Yeah. Now, if they want to do it, reach out to your friends and family. Don't say a word. Allow the double standard because that is getting them or keeping them invested in you and your life. And so they're going to have a hard time moving on. So it's okay if they do it, but you don't want to do it. Right. And really you want to make your ex feel safe. So don't do anything that would make them feel unsafe, stalking, you know, going to mutual friends, anything like this. Yeah. Just keep that women away. get especially upset by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Another moment in time where your avoidant ex might realize that they're losing you is when you move on and are in a different relationship. So I say this not to say that you should purposefully make your ex jealous because do, I know many of you are already do not seeing do it. that and you know, trying to have your, your girlfriend or your guy friend, you know, put on a hoodie or whatever and, and show it on the Instagram story to pretend you're with someone. Yeah. They already know all the tricks, yeah. okay? Don't I try to make- I put a picture of a finger on my glass. <laughs> It's like your other hand, but you painted nails on it, you know? <laughs> oh, I've heard it all. Yeah. I've heard it all. Believe Don't me, I know this. They, a lot, yeah, a lot of times it blows up in your face, mm -hmm. right? right? And so you're playing a very dangerous game of making them angry and mm -hmm giving them the anger to say, forget this. Right, right, right. So don't do it on purpose. A lot of times people can see through it. If it gets out that, you know, you're, you're just doing it to make them jealous. It, yeah, it can definitely backfire. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of that. But I will say, you know, this does tend to be a time where exes do realize, oh shoot, you know, they're not waiting for me. They're not ready and willing at any moment to be back in this relationship. So that can be a, a reality check for them. You know, you have to remember avoidance still want connection. That's right. Even if they are afraid of it, even if they are averse to it. Say that again. <laughs> avoidance <laughs> want connection. Avoidance do want connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're not going to say that there can't be extremely unhealthy avoidant behavior out there, mm -hmm. but even those people still want connection. We're hardwired to want it. Mm -hmm. With that said, I'll make my next point, which is they start to realize that they could lose you when they have more space than they are comfortable with. Say that again. 
when they have more space than they are comfortable with. And that can be really hard to think about because avoidance and some severe avoidance need a lot, a lot of space. But there does come a time where space is too much even for them that's and right. you have to create that space that's that's or exactly allow right. it more so and that's why we're trying to get you centered and working on your attachment issues so you can handle that with ease and grace and confidence but that doesn't magically happen you actually have to do the work to get there okay so when the avoidant realizes that you don't need them right and they see they start to see you as independent, confident, and it makes them really rethink how they feel about you. Even the most stubborn avoidant that you thought would never change their feelings about you, they can, when you start to shift your behavior and act in a more confident way. The pressure goes away. That, that pressure that they were initially feeling goes away in time and not reaching out. That's why we have to keep emphasizing that. Right. When you reach out, there's more pressure. The connection's there. You're a safety net. No, you got to walk away and leave them alone. Then they start to get more and more uncertain that they're going to lose you and anxious that they're going to lose you. And it makes them start to wonder more and more where you're at, what you're doing, and they want you a lot more. Mm -hmm. they, they see your confidence, they're a lot more attracted to you, and they start to miss you. They start to process things, they start to realize that maybe things that were bothering them before aren't as important as they were feeling, and now they're kind of over it, and they realize how important you are in their life. All these things can start to happen, but it takes time to get there. Mm -hmm. So, the timeline can look very different based on, because like, every situation is so different. You know, there's so many different factors. Mm -hmm. How you behaved, how they behaved, your attachment traumas, their attachment traumas, your ability to communicate, their ability to communicate, how attracted to you were they, uh, where they thought the relationship was going, how serious it was. I mean, these are just some of the factors mm -hmm. that we're looking at when we're breaking down a situation. So there's a lot of different things that you're gonna see and that's why we say every situation is so different and unique because it truly is. And you know as well as I do that in any given day, mm -hmm. your calls are going to be very different mm -hmm. throughout the yeah. day. Yeah, right? and it's wild. You know, every situation really is yeah. different. And it could also be things that are happening in your ex's life that you can't control, especially if you're in no contact. It can be really hard to know what's going on. You don't know if one day they run into something that reminds them of the relationship naturally on their own, or if you know one day they are feeling more down than another day. So you have to be able to reassure yourself during this time where you might not be in contact with them. Yeah. And and also remember that that uncertainty, it breeds curiosity. The more curious someone is about you, the more invested they're gonna become. That's right. They're thinking about you more and more, that makes their interest level go up. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're not really working on yourself in no contact and you're just watching no contact videos, you're not really going to exhibit the changes that you need to do to create a stronger dynamic and outgrow the previous dynamic that you had with them. You need to do something different. They weren't happy in the relationship, right? Not likely. Mm -hmm. And so you need to do things different so they will be happy. And you have to have the skills, the confidence, and the abilities to do that. So don't just watch no contact videos, please. You're not gonna get very far. And you won't be ready when they do come back. But we can help you, that's what we're here for. You can get a coaching with us on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you need. Just click on her name to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.